part 11 of a very important read of an article posted on geoengineeringwatch.org, an Air Force officer warning Americans about atmospheric spraying and the coming collapse. If you have not listened to part 1 through 10, go to my channel, listen to it, then come back here and listen to part 11. If you don't want to listen to any of it, click on the link below and read it. Very important information imparted by an Air Force colonel. Information that will help ordinary Americans protect themselves for the coming collapse. I will pick it up here. As both a former Vietnam combat veteran and a therapist and a consultant in rehabilitation at several VA medical centers, I have some idea of what I am writing about. Many of these young men have never known a woman, never completed their educations, never experienced the joys of marriage or parenthood, never achieved the high point of their careers. They took no vacations, and they enjoyed no retirement years. And we continue to send our young men and women to foreign lands to be wounded or killed, when in actuality, we have no good reason to either have a military presence in that country, interfere with its customs, traditions, or religion, or jeopardize the safety of our men and women. To me, this is political gamesmanship of the worst order, gambling with human lives. The sad truth is, we did not uphold our part of the bargain. We let our wounded and killed troops down, and unless we acted swift, unless we act swiftly, and decisively, they will all have suffered and died in vain. If you have ever seen the monument to all Marines in Arlington, Virginia, serving as a constant reminder of their perseverance and bravery in Iowa Jima, located near the back entrance to Arlington National Cemetery, or visited the cemetery and the monuments that honor fallen soldiers, from World War I and II and Vietnam, I feel certain you understand what I am talking about. If those are just monuments to you, I think you should ask yourself exactly what it is you mean by the word just. Behavioral scientists, psychologists, psychiatrists, social psych psychologists tend to agree that approximately 14% of the American population suffer from mental disorders that, while lacking in obvious, unusual, or overt symptoms, compel them nonetheless to secretly gravitate toward positions of power and authority over others. How many positions in governments at all levels, from the cop on the beat to the President of the United States, can you think of who could easily fit into this category? He's talking about narcissists. He's talking about psychopaths. Today. We are certainly seeing it in law enforcement circles, with the unprecedented number of murders of children, teens, and adults by those who have sworn to protect and defend us and sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution when effective non-lethal means of arrest or apprehension were not but could have been used. In many cases, these victims are unarmed. Somehow these officers are receiving the message overtly or tacitly that it is all right to shoot defenseless Americans with little or no provocation or justification. Often, officers involved in these tragic contacts fabricate untruths to avoid punishment. No, they lie to avoid punishment. The murder of 19-year-old Zachary Hammond in South Carolina several months ago along with others, provides an excellent case in point. When will we reach the point at which we agree that not only black lives matter, but that all lives matter? I thought it was interesting to view a videotape provided by a lifelong friend, a young attorney turned FBI agent. He eventually served as the SAC, or special agent in charge, of the Southeast region. He reminded me again, Never speak with police without your attorney present, no matter how friendly they may seem. Their job is to put you away. If you say you left a restaurant at about 9 p.m. and you were seen leaving at 9.20 p.m., then you have just been caught in a lie. 
lying to a federal officer is in itself a federal offense. He reminded me of the first sentence of the Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. An interesting example of police overreach took place in this mall where three adult customers were talking. A young mall cop approached them. He appeared to be about 19 or 20 years old. His unusually large abdomen protruded over his belt and trousers. No doubt flexing his muscles, he told the group of adults that they would have to disperse or he would call the police on them. The looks on the faces of the adults were those of incredulity, incredulity. The mall cop asked them what they were talking about. As it turned out, they attended the same church and were discussing church-related matters. The foolish, naive mall cop obviously could not think of anything else to say. So he asked, do you go to Sunday school every Sunday? In actuality, this mall cop had no probable cause and no expectation that these people had committed a crime. Even if he had full legal authority, he would have been unable to detain them. As a final parting shot, the young would-be cop told the group that if they did not leave, he would call the police, calling him back up for a major crime. The people did not leave, and the mall cop eventually drifted away. One of the 14 percenters, as the lieutenant colonel mentioned above, stated the fuse is short, the fuse to collapse. Part 12 will be coming up.